Transferring the load to the bypass simply and quickly is one of the key requirements of a bypass isolation switch. And the Eaton Bypass Isolation Switch does it in just one step. The user simply moves the Auto Bypass Selector Switch to the bypass position, and a no-load brake transfer to bypass is completed. In this type of transfer, the transfer is made in a make-before-brake fashion, and both the ATS and the bypass are temporarily closed on the same source before the ATS disconnects, never losing power to the load. The user then has 60 seconds to move the Kirk key from the upper door to the lower door to begin isolating the ATS contactor for maintenance. Upon transfer of the load to the bypass contactor, the microprocessor controller switches to the bypass contactor as well. This functionality is what Eaton refers to as dual ATS technology, allowing a user to always retain automatic transfer capability even in bypass. In the event that a user does not want automatic bypass functionality, the unit can easily be converted to a non-automatic or manual switch. To operate the bypass contactor in a non-automatic mode while the ATS is in the isolated position, the user simply moves the test manual switch to the manual position. At that point, the user can manually transfer sources by operating the Source 1 and Source 2 selector switch. A key safety feature built into the bypass isolation switch is the ability to perform a single motion rack in and out of the ATS contactor while the enclosure doors are closed. The only tool required for this is a commercially available 3 8 inch ratchet. To do this, the user removes the Kirk key from the upper enclosure door interlock and places it into the lower enclosure door interlock. This reveals a small opening in the enclosure door through which a single motion rack out is performed. As the device is drawn out, pilot indicator lights on the upper and lower doors let the user know when the device is in the isolated position. In the isolated position, the ATS is off the main bus but is still connected to the microprocessor controller. At this point, the test manual selector switch and Source 1, Source 2 selector switch on the upper door become active. Moving the test manual switch to the test ATS position allows the user to test the electrical operation of the ATS by using the Source 1, 2 switch. The ATS can be completely removed by opening the lower enclosure door and continuing the rack out procedure until the device is in the racked out position. The contactor can then be rolled onto a cart or lift device. To rack the ATS back into the compartment, the user simply reverses the rack-out procedure. The ATS can only be racked into the isolated position with the door open. If the contactor switch is accidentally left in the on position, electrical interlocks will trip the contactor to the off position before it reaches the isolated position. The user can then close the lower enclosure door and safely complete the rack-in process. This process is complete when the ATS racked-in light turns on.